Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to fix that lateral scapular winging that you're having. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to be showing you how to fix that lateral scapular winging that you've been dealing with. And if you've been following along at all, you'll know that last week we touched on medial scapular winging. So if you were unaware, there are actually two types of scapular winging that you could be struggling with. And it's important to know the type that you are struggling with so that you can actually address the issues versus fumble around and just kind of guess at what you're doing on how to restore what's happening at the shoulder. So when we have medial scapular winging, that is when the scapula is sucked in tight to the spinal column. It is off-centered in direction of the spinal column. When we have lateral, as you can guess, it's the opposite. So it is going the other direction and it has more to do with our mid trap and lower trap and rhomboid range. So we're looking more at that musculature that runs between the spinal column and the scapula in this case versus on a medial uh, scapular winging where we'd be looking at the serratus anterior. You gotta make sure I'm saying these the right way so I don't confuse you guys. So with lateral scapular winging, it's also important to note that if you have a cervical issue at the C3 to C4 range, this could be what's causing that lateral scapular winging. So we do want to address some issues of what could be happening at the neck there. And we'll give you a few things here that you could start with to do that as well. So we'll be looking a little bit at the cervical spine to make sure that that is not a part of the issue at hand. And then we're gonna be showing you how to address the actual control of the scapula itself. This is an interesting joint because it's basically floating, suspended by muscle, acting like a trampoline almost, where it has springs all around, which are the muscles themselves, but those muscles are out of balance, those springs are out of balance, and now we are shifted off to one position versus another. So today we're gonna to show you how to, first of all, address the joint of the scapula itself, making sure that it has the stability that it should, and you understand how to control those motions of the scapula, and that you also are able to address soft tissues that could be causing it to be a little bit worse up front and also stabilize again through some more strengthening exercises specific at the end. So we've got a few things we'll be looking at and let's go ahead and dive into them right now. All right, the first thing we're gonna do here is address the cervical spine. So we have a band anchored high on a post. We're gonna place it at the base of the skull here so it's around the back of the head, just over the ears. Then you wanna interlace those fingers over the top of the band, just out in front of your head so that you're taking it and making sure that it's kind of locking your head into that position but also allowing those arms to hang dead weight. Now to start, you could do it from a standing position, just leaned back so you're getting a little bit of put resistance from that band, a little bit of pull from that band here. And then if you need to increase that, you can go down to kneeling and even sitting your butt to your heels if you wanna take it a step further. So we're allowing that band to pull up on our head and neck and we're using that resistance to actually perform a little contract and relax to those tissues around the neck while it's under traction as well. So we wanna perform things like yeses, so we're nodding yes, we're nodding no, and then we wanna try rotation side to side as well while that neck is under traction, addressing that C3 to C4 range. Next, we're gonna move that band down to about hip height on our post here, and we're gonna be facing the band. Here, we're gonna to start to address that scapular position. So we wanna place the band so it's at the back of the shoulder, we're facing the band. The same side leg is out front, so you can press back away. Now, you might not start with a resistance band this big when you're starting off. You might want something lighter that you can control a lot easier. So we're placing that at the back of the shoulder, got my arm internally rotated so that's going to try and pull my scapula into that protracted position and then I'm actively pulling my shoulder blade back in together here you can see both shoulders coming together to hug the spinal column against the resistance of that band each time 
So once we do some reps here at the shoulder itself, we're gonna slide that down to the elbow as well and try it as a little bit of a longer lever motion where it's got a little more leverage pulling at you. It might be a little bit more difficult for you in this position. And we're just letting that band again, pull the arm and the shoulder into that internally rotated position and that we are externally rotating and retracting and depressing that scapula, pulling back and together. Next, we're gonna move the band out to the wrist here. You place it on the back of the wrist and then interlace it between the middle and ring fingers. Then we're gonna go out so that the arm is directly being pulled out to the side. What I wanna do is let the band actually take my scapula off my body to that side position in the beginning. And then I'm gonna work on keeping the arm as straight as possible as I retract that scapula, pulling it back toward the spinal column. You can see that ridge start to form as I pull in. I'm keeping my arm as long as I can, trying to focus on just the scapular movement happening here. Again, you're gonna start with a lighter band, and as you get more competent in these movements, you can increase the resistance from that band that you're using. So just think of it as any other form of resistance training here as we address the joint of the scapula. You're gonna scale it and build it. Next, we're gonna turn so the band is pulling me overhead here. So I want my palm up toward the sky here. Again, my arm as straight as possible. I'm actively gonna shrug the shoulder blade up into my ear, and then I wanna pull back down as far as I can without bending at the elbow each time. So the key is keeping that elbow straight here. Actively shrug the shoulder and then pull down deep in the opposite direction as far as you're able to depressing the scapula. Next, we're gonna do a little bit of self myofascial release to the anterior shoulder to help that shoulder open up so it's not being held by those tight tissues on the front side. So what we're gonna do is roll just below that clavicle out toward the shoulder from the center, the sternum, toward the shoulder itself. And we're searching for tight, tender tissues to the pressure of the ball. Now, anytime you find those tender points, what you could do is actually flex the muscle on that tender point and then release that flex for, hold the flex for five seconds and then release and allow the ball to sink in a little bit deeper into those tissues each time. So that contract relax can help you get past those sticky points, those trigger points in the tissues that are restricted there. Also search out at the front of the shoulder a little bit and you could even take this ball to the back of the armpit if you turn to your side and reach up overhead, which can be beneficial getting those lats to release as well. Lastly, we wanna focus on restabilizing as much as possible here. So the first one we're doing is in extension, palms facing the floor. I've got a dowel down below on my hamstrings there. And I first of all, just wanna reach that dowel down the legs as much as I'm able to with those hands pretty close together. You'll see that I'm tucking my chin toward my Adam's apple and then I'm externally rotating. So I'm rolling my shoulders open as I squeeze the shoulder blades together. So we wanna really coordinate that movement of external rotation as my shoulder blades anchor to my upper and mid back here. That is the initial movement we're trying to really restore and gain control over. Now it might not be this high at first for you, but it's something you can build up to. The next one is a prone T. From that same position, we're going to elevate the arms out to the side at shoulder height, thumbs pointed up to the ceiling, 
we want to pull and initiate the movement from the shoulder blades so you're squeezing those shoulder blades together reaching the thumbs back in together opening up as much as possible and again tucking the chin to the chest an important note on these prone positions is that you're keeping your glutes flexed so that you're pinning your pelvis down into the mat it should feel like your glutes are holding your pelvis firm to the floor and that's where a lot of stability comes from in this position the last one from this prone position is a press using the dowel so with the arms about 90 degrees we're going to pull the dowel onto the scapula and then press it out overhead again i'm stabilizing my pelvis into the floor from my glutes as i hold this and i want to try and make sure that i'm minimizing head movement as much as possible as i press that dowel and then pull it back over so that it's my shoulders that are using their movement to get over the head there next we're going to start to work against the wall in this one so we want to sit in the corner of a room and we're going to start with the elbows at 90 degrees now our goal is to get our forearm against the wall completely so think of the back of the wrist and the forearm being on the wall as we work from here we want to slide our elbows down to the ribs as much as possible minimizing that rotation of the arm that wants to pull that forearm off the wall so really keeping those forearms back keeping the shoulder blades down and back together as I pull here and then reaching out overhead long rotating the thumbs toward the back as I reach up overhead again sliding the forearms on the wall here I've got a little less room so I'm running out of space on the wall but you can if you have a regular wall, go all the way to full extension as you reach up overhead, mainly minding that shoulder positioning, keeping those scapula down and back even as you extend up. Lastly, we're going to add some resistance pulling out to the front in that W position. So we're going half kneeling band anchored on a post at about head height here. And we're going to do some face pulls with thumbs pointed back. I'm going to focus on the scapula controlling the movement, squeezing down and back as you pull, trying to get the wrist over the elbow in line with the ears or even slightly behind the ears when you pull back each time. So that's important that we get that alignment, really making sure that we are getting in a good position there. If you need to, you can step in between making sure that you have the appropriate amount of resistance. Next, you can add a press to this so that you are able to control that overhead positioning as well. There will be upward rotation of the scapula here, but again, we should see nice smooth control through that pressing and pulling back down. All right, and there you have it. How to fix your lateral scapular winging. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend. If you looked at their shoulders and you see that wing is out to the side laterally, you know this video is for them, pass it along their way so that they can restore that shoulder position as well in themselves. Now if this is something you've been struggling with for a long time and you haven't been able to find a solution to your problem just yet and you want direct help or guidance fully resolving it or you have other training aches or injuries that are standing in your way of training at the full capacity that you wish to, then what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description so that you can fill out a coaching application and schedule a mobility blueprint call. This is your opportunity to jump on a Zoom call with me so that we can assess your mobility limitations, movement limitations, gather all the information I would need to tailor a program specifically to your needs, and answer any questions and describe programming and coaching and clarity for you so that you understand what you would be doing to help yourself fully take those steps and resolve the problems that you have at hand. If that sounds good to you, drop down below in the description right now and take advantage of the opportunity of that mobility blueprint call. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.